Hello Minders, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. I think it's high time I did a bird again. And I was at the bookstore the other day and saw this on the stand. Every now and then I pick up a birds in bloom. The goldfinch, I thought, you know, I would love to do a goldfinch. I haven't done one that I know of for this channel. I've got some rough sketches in places. It's just high time I did another bird and I want to do some line and wash. It's probably my favorite way to do birds. I like to do them kind of sketchy and loose. For some reason I just think it gives it some energy and uh, some interest. But our goldfinches around here have not come out of their winter plumage yet. So I'm just assembling some of my reference. These are photos I took from my feeder. And I think these will suffice for getting proportions. I'm probably just going to draw my own poses. Uh, birds are really easy uh, to study the proportions of and then draw them on your own. The other thing is, too, is that most finches share the same body proportions. Uh, this is a house finch or rosy finch. Their beaks and uh, bodily proportions are almost identical. Of course, individuals will vary, and their head, depending on how it's turned or their neck is craned, can look a little different. But uh, if you're just studying the shape and the proportions of uh, finches, you'll be able to use that in more than one type of bird, even a goldfinch. There's another example. These are all rosy finches sometimes called house finches. I love this pose, which we have a fatter head and neck sort of orientation there. Uh, so I'm gonna draw and ink and paint, hopefully a couple of them for you today, and we'll see where this goes. And when you're drawing birds, the proportions you need to notice and the way they'll differ is the size of the head in relation to the body, the size of the body in re relation to the length of the tail. Those will vary depending on the species of bird. Finches have a fat, heavy-duty sort of parrot beak um, designed for seed cracking. They can sit there and just go through sunflower seed after sunflower seed. And their head-to-body mass is uh, proportion is fairly average. Drawing of birds, uh, bird proportions, especially uh, feeder-type birds like this, the proportions are very forgiving. You also need to pay attention to where the eye is in the head. It's about a third of the way back. It's not in the middle if you're looking at it from the side. Again, you know, where you see the view, you know, what angle will make a difference. The eye lines up with just above the center of the beak. And the beak usually uh, connects to the head above the eye. So these are proportions that you need to watch. Another mistake I see a lot. Uh, with drawing birds is that uh, legs are drawn straight down a lot and the feet underneath and, and a lot of times uh, artists will not observe. The legs go almost straight. Sometimes they're, they're straight like this or at a very slight angle and then the feet. And in, in this case we're looking slightly foreshortened. He's, uh, he's got his head turned that way but the body is, is facing more towards this way. And so these legs are foreshortened, so the feet are going to be way up here. And I've got a really good view of the feet structure. And I'm not going to draw a feeder, I'm going to draw a branch, but just a section of a branch anyway. But this is a good pose even for a goldfinch, even though it's a rosy finch. All right, well, we're just going to finish up the pencils here and get them ready for inking kind of debated on how I was going to ink and do these. Uh, I'd like to stick with a looser sketchy look I guess you might say. A fairly simple coloring scheme and painting scheme. But I sort of debated back and forth. Anyway uh, let's talk about the pen for a minute. Now this is the pen that I said that I wanted to do a fuller not so much review but I want to put it through its paces. So far all I've done since my initial unboxing review is to test it. I've not actually used it. So this is the first piece that I'm actually using it from start to finish. And I'll just tell you up front, it, it did great. I didn't have any complaints. It's just nice knowing that I'm putting down India ink. <laughs> the pen feels nice in the hand. I mean, it's just a very easy starter in terms of the, the line. The one complaint I had was actually not about the pen at all. It was the paper. This is the B. 100% cotton watercolor sketchbook. And uh, if I left the point on the paper very long, it bled a little bit. 
so the ink just sort of spread in a little spot. I have tested this on other papers and it didn't do that. Uh, on arches it does wonderful. So as I was inking this, I was kind of thinking, eh, kind of wish I'd done this on some arches paper. Or at least a better quality paper than B. But in the end it was a minor thing. But it's a real joy to use this pen. The interesting thing, and I'll mention this probably several times throughout, is uh, I did two of these for the purpose of trying to figure out how I wanted to do these. And I, I have not done birds in a while, so I needed some warming up. And I know from experience, warm-ups um, are important. Uh, this first bird turned out to be a little bit heavy-handed in the inking and detail. And I don't feel it was quite as fresh as the second one. So all of that is just to be instructive. Uh, sometimes it's a good idea to do some warm-ups. And obviously I'm going to do these concurrently. I'm going to do one, then the other, and then kind of paint them at the same time also, sort of an assembly line. I even debated whether to completely color them. Sometimes I like being able to see the line and only coloring a portion. But I decided to paint the whole thing. So there we go. There's the inking. And we are ready for some paint. Just for fun, I'm using quills. This is a Da Vinci Casaneo quill. I like it a lot. Synthetic. And I decided to kind of try at least to integrate some background washes into the bird. Um, mainly close or analogous to the yellow color that a goldfinch is. Um, I'm not sure if I did these again, and I, I really want to do these again, because I have some other ideas um, if I would do it this way. I'm also using a very grayed violet in the background. That color, uh, it, it's a little bluer than what I'm going to use on the bird, but I end up using that color on the bird, too, as the black or the very dark. You can see me doing the same thing with the bottom bird. So the, the top bird sort of, again, ended up being my practice bird or my warm-up bird. And the bottom bird uh, turned out to be a little bit more rehearsed. It happens. And we'll revisit these backgrounds a little later in the video, but uh, that's at least an establishing wash. And, and then I get into actually painting the bird. Yellow is a difficult color sometimes. I didn't go as lemony yellow as sometimes a goldfinch will be. It was a little more of a, a brown gold. Probably not as brown as it looks in the video, but I try to bolster it with some lemon yellow a little bit later. You can see what I'm talking about in the cap and the wings, where most of the black markings are on a goldfinch. Um, I, I like there to be color in black, because where there are highlights, black doesn't usually appear black. So that was sort of the color that I chose. And then when it needs to be put down in a dark area is almost black, then I have that ability to do that. It's mostly neutral tint, dioxazine purple, uh, occasionally some ultramarine blue mixed in. The gold is a azo yellow, a quinacridone a nickel quinacridone gold, sometimes a little bit of sepia, just very tiny amounts of sepia. Well, I want to keep it a little more reddish. Sometimes I'll put in some transparent red iron oxide. So the important part I think is the mid-tones uh, as they start to head towards highlight, need to have that sort of lemony yellow look. That's kind of where your local color identity comes. 
And here we're just catching up on the bottom one with a little bit more of the background. And you'll see as I go, we're going to just move into some music here in a minute. But you'll see I tried to spice up the background with a little bit of movement and energy. But try to keep it loose overall. And they were just really fun to paint. All right, thanks everyone. Here are the finished birds. I'm not too terribly unhappy with that. Happier with the bottom one than the top one. That's kind of par for the course. Thank you so much, patrons, for your continued support in making this channel possible. See everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.